Hey, good evening and welcome to Pastor Chat, where we get to have a conversation with uh, the pastors of Buck Run. Uh, and we're, we're, man, we're expanding this. We're going to do other staff. Tanya's going to do Pastor Wives Chat. We've got great stuff in store for you. Uh, hey, last night, I hear we had technical difficulties with uh, our, uh, you know, ask anything night. But there were great questions. I think we, we were posting the videos. You can still watch it. But there were a couple of questions last night about uh, the devil. And they came from uh, Avery Heisel, I believe, and Becky Cunningham. So if a Heisel or a Cunningham, one of, whoever gets hits us up first on Facebook or text uh, Chris or Scott or somebody, I've got a book for you. I only got one. It's 40 questions about angels, demons, and spiritual warfare. So, all right, the uh, Heisels or the Cunninghams, hit us up. I've got a book for you. Whoever gets through first on Facebook or whatever, Chris and Scott are monitoring that. But see, you never know. When you watch our stuff, you never know what free stuff you'll get. Tonight, we're getting to talk to our newest staff member here at Buck Run, uh, Will Morris. Welcome. Thanks for having me. You guys... Got in your house today? Yes, we closed this morning on it. So we're moving in on, we're cleaning it and stuff for the next couple of days, but we're moving in on Saturday. Move, moving in on Saturday. Uh, so you closed on your house down there and this one during the pandemic? Yes, we did. That's wild, man. And moving, <laughs> first of all, let me just say thank you that you're you're feeling your calling to be here so strongly that you're doing all this. It's, it's about the most inopportune time in the world to start a new ministry, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's really, really strange. It's not what we expected, but the Lord's you, been working in it the whole time. So You're, you're ministering and teaching kids you've not yet met face-to-face, -face. Uh, but, man, thanks. For you. uh, you're diving right in there and getting a, a start and teaching and all kinds of good stuff, so thanks. I'm, we're excited <laughs> about you being here. Now, let me tell you, the number one rule, York's number one rule, okay? You, you have joined a staff that is phenomenal. You know that. I mean, these guys are phenomenal. Our folks can attest to that. Even before the COVID-19 stuff hit, these guys were phenomenal. They have really upped their game during this, and they're just doing such tremendous work. The whole church appreciates it. I get every day people email me, text me, call me. Oh, man, you guys are killing it, and it's really those guys are killing it, doing such a great job. So York's number one rule, you know what it is? Don't mess this up. <laughs> That's it. Every day I get up, I tell myself that. Don't mess this up. It's a simple rule. It's amazing how many people can't keep that rule. <laughs> so... Uh, not around here. Everybody around here has kept the rule real well, but that's that's the number one rule. Don't mess this I'll up. Keep, I'll keep that in mind. Yeah, that's, <laughs> you know, don't don't ever make me have to call you on that okay. one. That's not, you know, we, we just don't want to mess this up. So, uh, Will, tell us about yourself. Uh, uh, you did a little bit before, just very, very briefly, but tell us again uh, about your background, your parents in ministry, and even on the mission field. Tell us how you grew up. Yeah, so um, I grew up as a pastors and missionaries kid. Um, they, uh, we lived in South Carolina for until I was about seven or so, and my dad was pastoring different small churches in South Carolina, um, and really, really great pastor that um, is just serving faithfully in, in the small church. Um, when I was seven or eight or so, they uh, felt the call to, da dad would lead mission trips to different uh, different countries, and he went to Cambodia on a short-term mission trip. And uh, he said when he got to Cambodia, he stepped off the plane and felt the humidity and smelled mm -hmm. the smell. And yeah. um, in that moment, he said, I would never bring my family here. And he said by the time he got back on the plane, he said, I think the Lord is calling us to move to Cambodia. And so uh, he came home and uh, we packed up and sold everything and moved to Cambodia with the International Mission Board. And we lived there for a couple of years. Um, the uh, IMB kind of ran out of money around that time, so uh, they ended up having to send us back. So that's yeah. uh, a, a very tangible example of um, the power of giving. And why it matters. Um, yeah, why it matters because there are 
missionary families. And, that, and man, there's no greater shame than to have people who are willing and even already there. Yeah. To have to bring them home. Yeah. Wow, that's a tragedy. It's a tragedy. Yeah, it was, it was tough. But um, the Lord led us when we came back, the Lord led us to East Tennessee. And my dad started pastoring a, a, a First Baptist church there in a small town in East Tennessee. And we were there for um, all, all the way through high school till I went to college. And um, then the Lord called them back on the mission field after I went to college. They, uh, they went to Sri Lanka and um, spent a few years in Sri Lanka and um, but yeah I went to uh, I went to college at East Tennessee State University in Johnson City Tennessee Mm -hmm. and that's where I met Abby who um, uh, we worked at a bookstore together worked at Lifeway actually together um, and no longer exists that's right (laughs) you're glad you got in there while you could that's that's right Um, so yeah we met at Lifeway and um, we got married before we graduated and uh, and then ended up uh, working, uh, go, going to seminary through Southern Seminary. And um, when I finished seminary, I got a, a job as a worship director at the church, and I've been working there since then as a worship director. And you, you went through Southern Seminary in a, a special cohort program yeah. with Daniel Broyles, right? Yeah, that's right. And, uh, of course, Daniel's still very, very much beloved. Uh, the truth is, we love Daniel okay. <laughs> We are crazy about Amy. That's right. You know, Amy, Amy, <laughs> Amy's the one. But uh, they really are very sp- special and precious to us. Buck Run has a tremendous track record, really, of guys that have come and worked on our staff and going out and just doing tremendous great things for the Lord. And Daniel's certainly at the top of that list. He's, he's yeah. just a unique guy. And uh, I'm glad that he influenced you. Yeah. In fact, he's the guy that he's the one that put you on our radar. Right. So we both owe him. Yeah, I owe Daniel a lot. Daniel has taught me uh, most of the things I know about ministry. So um, whether that's good or bad, it's <laughs> it's coming from. So him. you're sort of like a minister grandchild of mine. <laughs> a little bit. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, all right. You and Abby, how long did you guys date? Uh, let's see. So that's a great question. We started dating in September of twenty. 14, I think, and we got married in December of 2015. So uh, we dated, I think it was like nine months, got engaged. We were engaged for six months and then got married. Yeah, not not too long. No. I mean, you, you're not even close on the York scale. No, but, it's not, but, you know, not it, quite that bold. No, no, no. But, uh, you probably had to talk her into it. I don't know. Hey, oh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. She. Uh, we knew each other for quite a while. She thought I was weird. Um, she didn't like me at first, but I wore her down, I guess. Are you, do, do you think, uh, let me ask you a question. So I was in MK, uh, you know, my dad was a missionary in Brazil and, uh, MKs have a reputation for being weird, <laughs> you know, it, it, because they grow up in multiple cultures and they, there's, there's something to be said that they really don't yeah. fit yeah. in any. Do you think there's something to that? There, there might have been something to that. When, <laughs> might uh, have been. I, I'll say when I when I first got back from Cambodia, I was really weird. I, I was I was yeah. extremely. I slowly figured out how to what was acceptable in society, though. I, I, yeah, I mean you you've had to work real hard to fit in in right. a totally foreign culture to yes. you. Language, all that, and suddenly you come back in like East Tennessee, and which right. is its own subculture. That's right. Uh, yeah, East that, Tennessee, believe it or not, is not the same culture as Cambodia, and that'll. Yeah, uh, that'll it's not even it. the same culture as West Tennessee. That's, that's right. You know, uh, so well, and uh, so Abby, tell us about Abby. Abby uh, grew up in the Johnson City area in Tennessee, so uh, her family moved there when she was like two years old so um, that's all she's known um, until now so it's a really big faith step for her to step out of that right now Um, but she uh, is just awesome yeah I think so if you if you meet I can't wait for you guys to meet Abby because you'll be much happier with the hire of me um, because she's hey everybody around here knows it's one of my key things I look at you know it's like I'm I'm not I'm not hiring a guy who's just got like an okay wife. You know? uh, it's, it's because the wives here are phenomenal too, and they all work together well and really involved in the ministry. And Abby, she she meets that standard. We're excited. And you all have one one son, yes. James. 
James, is um, if you want to say 15 months or if you want to say a year and three months, or so, he's, he's mm. one of those. Yeah, yeah, maybe both. <laughs> uh, uh, well, yeah, he, how's he, like, in the move, how's he taking it? You know, he was already in a little bit of a weird uh, period. He started walking, and he started getting into things he wasn't supposed to get into, and he started. Well, there's nothing like an empty house to help right, with that, right? Exactly. exactly. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, he uh, he's started to find things that he's not supposed to hold, and when you take them away, he starts screaming, and he's uh, it's, it's a difficult kind of season in the first place, but then you throw in the move. It's It's been tough, but he really uh, – all things considered, he's doing pretty well. Well, tell me about uh, your ministry influences. I mean, like people you read, people you listen to. Uh, what has shaped and influenced you uh, for ministry? Yeah. Um, well, my dad was uh, huge for me because obviously I grew up in uh, sitting under his preaching and um, and going and seeing him do the ministry um, in person, so he's a huge influence on me. Um, and then I uh, I remember pretty distinctly, I went as a high school, I think I was probably a sophomore, um, to one of the first uh, together for the gospel things in Louisville. Really? Um, yeah, it was before they went to the big, uh, is it the KFC Center or is it? Yeah, the Yum Center. The Yum Center, yeah. It was before they went to that. It was one of the smaller centers that they did it at. But um, I remember a, uh, in particular, there was one sermon. Um, it was John MacArthur's sermon on uh, the theology of sleep. Uh, really what impacted me. So I started studying him um, uh, when I was pretty young. And then I got a book from that conference uh, by R.C. Sproul. Uh, the holiness of God, and so I. Oh yeah, it's classic. Yeah, I started. I yeah. started reading. That. I read that in in my twenties. Yeah, yeah, that was that yeah. was pretty shaping for me. I I, I think that uh, reading that book kind of opened my. That was one of the things that made me just be in awe of God first, mm-hmm. and that sort of shaped um, from an early age the call of ministry in me was um, was hearing from guys like that and. Uh, recognizing that it, he truly is a God that is worthy of worship. And um, so that spurred me on. I think since then, um, I've, I've really appreciated that circle of, of people and uh, that sort of together for the gospel, Mark Dever mm-hmm. and um, Greg Gilbert and all, all of them have really been influential for me. Well, man, the, the, you have, those, are, those are good models for sure. Uh, tell me about the way you like to, the way you prepare for preaching, teaching. Um, like, do you like the study? Are you more of a study rat or, you know, or, or is that something you have to really work at? But you like the delivery? But not, uh, Tell me your I, thought process. I love the process. It's, um, it's something that I have to fight to shorten because if, if it wasn't if it wasn't for time constraints, I would just keep studying and, and keep um, keep going. So it it really is. Um, I was just I was preparing for our uh, student worship for next week earlier today, and just got. I was sitting in my office by myself studying, and I just got giddy. <laughs> like I was, yeah. I, I just followed yeah, a uh, yeah. followed a cross reference and saw that a word was the same in two places, and how it connected and pointed us to the love of God. And I was like, wow, yeah. it was just, uh, it was just awesome. So that that sort of thing, I think, is um, is really really powerful. I love just digging deeper into the word. So how good is your Greek? It's not very good. <laughs> You're at the right place. You're at the right place. I'm trying to learn more. Yeah. Uh, me and Abby have been rehearsing, um, and I've I've been as I've been preparing my because I've been a worship director. I've not been preaching as much um, uh-huh. in the past. So as I've been preparing more messages since being here uh, for the online student worship, I've been like, man, I need to do better at Greek. I need to get better at Yeah, this. yeah. Well, I, I can help with that. Yeah, I can great. help with that. Uh, so, uh, tell me, what what like dreams, aspirations do you have 
here at Buck Run? What, what do you want to do? What do you want to see happen with our youth? What, what's on your heart? Yeah, I want, um, I want relationships to be built with students. I, I really do want to um, become a mentor in students' lives, and um, I want to expose them to um, Scripture. I, I want them to understand uh, Scripture well. I want them to grow to love Scripture uh, like like I was describing, just the for them to read scripture and genuinely just mm -hmm. fall in love with it, um, and I want that to move them to action. I want I want uh, to see our students not just kind of internalize their faith and say, oh well, I, I really love this faith, but I want them to open that up to the world around them, and I want to give them experiences that help them see, oh, there are lost people where we live here. There are lost people we need to reach who, who just don't know the gospel. Um, and then even further than that, there's lost people who have no access to the gospel all around the world. And I want to show our students that, and I want them, um, I want them to leave student ministry knowing uh, kind of a, an idea of their role in taking the gospel to the nations. Wouldn't it be great if 10 years from now there are a lot of Buck Run students that are either on the mission field or heading that way? That would be so exciting. Yeah, man, that's, uh, you know, one of the, to me, one of the big burdens that I have is to see parents willing to see the Lord use their children. Uh, I have, I've, through my ministry, I've heard parents many times say things like oh you know i mean i want my children to love god but oh i hope he didn't call them to preach oh i hope he doesn't send them to the mission field and i just think first of all there's a deficient view of god behind that mm. you know god wants the best for your child more than you do and to say to the lord here i want you to take my child and use her or him for the for your glory you know the reality is i I, I want to spend eternity with my children and my grandchildren. And if that means I have to be away from them some here, I'm willing to do that if, they're, if it's because of the glory of Christ and making yeah. Christ known to the nations. And that's the attitude we have to have. And it's something I really want to see built into Buck Run. Tell me, your, so what are your impressions of Buck Run? What, what, what do you see here that excites you? Or maybe not. Maybe... You know, maybe, maybe you know, I'm assuming you're excited, but what are your first impressions of Buck Run in this strange <laughs> time in our history? We are so impressed with Buck Run right now. Um, we have, you know, we're distanced from people. We haven't yeah. been able to meet many people in person, and somehow we still feel so unbelievably welcomed. Um, there have been just piles of cards and notes and um just nice things that people have sent to us saying they're praying for us. Um, people have reached out on social media or email or uh, text message, just all sorts of people saying they can't wait to meet us, that they mm -hmm. are so glad that we're here, that they're praying for us. Um, we have felt just like in, in every step of the house process and um, all of our transition up here, it's just been nothing but welcome for us so we just can't imagine what it's going to be like when we can actually see yeah I, I mean i know i'm i'm prejudiced but the truth is there i think there are a lot of pastors that are at churches 16 years and they don't feel the way about their church the way i do about buck run they, this church really is that phenomenal and they're just so easy to love and they they just show up uh, they don't sign up for stuff ahead of time but they do show up uh <laughs> And it's just an incredible place. Um, you know what my number one rule is, don't you? Don't mess it up. Don't mess it up. That's <laughs> right. And every day, I was just like, don't mess this up, man. These, these, these are wonderful folks, and the Lord's just done a great thing. You know, it, it's like none of us pictured this moment in our history. Here we are. We're sitting basically in a $12 million studio. <laughs> it's a $12 million TV studio right now. But... Uh, you know, the time is going to be here before long. Th this will pass. My dad used to say his favorite verse was, and it came to pass. <laughs> it didn't come to stay, it came to pass. And this will pass. We will be back together, at, even if we have to do it 
slowly and sort of like you know synchronized uh, services or whatever to get people here in staggered groups but that'll pass too and you, you'll get to know folks and I really believe you'll you and Abby are just going to fall in love with them the way all these other pastors have our older pastors like me and our younger pastors we all feel so incredibly loved and welcomed by this church in fact uh you know, we were going to give you a free cruise to welcome you, but, you know, you had to use it by the end of May. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, I'm, I'm that afraid. That was very thoughtful of you. But we did get you a, a, a cruise and all-you-can-eat package. It's two inner tubes and two boxes of Ritz crackers. <laughs> we're going to drop you in the Kentucky River at the, on the east-west connector at the Julian Carroll Bridge, and then we'll pick you up. Uh, over by River Park uh, there uh, by Bell Point. And so you guys will get the scenic view of, of Frankfurt just sailing down the Kentucky River. There's, you know, it's an S curve through, through the town, and you, you see the whole thing. Can we wait until it warms up a little bit? Yeah, you, you, can, you, know. you can use this any time by the end of September. Okay. All right, you know, we'll, we'll arrange that uh, for you. So, um, man, I'm, I'm just excited that you're here. And it's just a, a joy to have you. Uh, now, uh, let me just sort of give you some random questions. And I like to, I call it twinkling of an eye around and just let you uh, say what you want to say. So do you have any favorite secular authors, any secular authors that you like to read? You know, um, unfortunately, most of the secular books I've read recently I've been reading specifically because I knew I disagreed yeah, with no, them. Yeah, that's right. Um, and so uh, I, I really, off the top of my head, I can't think of uh, someone that I really would affirm and really would say. Yeah, well, there are there. people that, like, I don't agree with, uh, but I love, like, my favorite would be a lady named Joan Didion. Her writing is just the most beautiful thing I've ever read and uh, I don't agree with her worldview but I, I just love to read her you know so there are secular people like I'm, I'm like you I, I read far more stuff I disagree with than the stuff I agree with because I already I already think that I don't right. need to read that so much as the stuff that I like to be challenged uh, as well so that's right. good so favorite kind of music um, it depends on what uh, what I'm doing. So I'm a big fan of like orchestra stuff. Like I, I love listening to the scores for movie like movie, movie soundtracks, tracks, uh -huh, yeah. soundtracks and stuff. Um, I love that. But I also really like kind of you know folky music um, and stuff like Josh Carroll's and. Um, John yeah. Foreman and that sort of thing. I really like that too. So it's kind of, and I was in high school, I was in a hardcore band. So I was really, yeah, I don't really listen to much of that anymore, but I, yeah. I love the, I love the screeching electric guitar and I love the violins and the flutes. So well, you play guitar, right? Yeah. Like, do you, I mean, do you shred? I, I don't shred often. But yes, I, I have the ability to shred. Oh, well, we'll have to hear it. <laughs> like uh, one of my favorite things ever, Prince one time, when they were uh, inducting George Harrison into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, Prince and Tom Petty and uh, George Harrison's son and uh, Jeff, what's his name from ELO, and a bunch of them were playing, and they played While My Guitar Gently Weeps, and Prince did this. Look it up on YouTube. Okay. You gotta see it. The rock, the uh, hall of rock and roll hall of fame performance. Prince playing while my guitar gently weeps. It's just like there's not. It's like nothing I've ever seen. Yeah. You gotta see it. If you're a shredder, you'll you'll love it. Do you like Prince? Yeah, Prin Prince is incredible. I mean, he's yeah. the musicianship. I mean, some of yeah. the stuff he writes, you just yeah. like ah, you know. But uh, you know, yeah, he he was he was phenomenal. Um, do you like classical at all? Yes, I I love listening to classical piano, um, in particular. I actually just uh, I I just saw a I think it was a TED talk or something. It was on on YouTube. Um, it was a guy talking about classical music and uh, th the power of it to mm -hmm. um, just like take you somewhere emotionally. 
Um, and so I got, I got on a little bit of a classical kick after that. And so I just earlier I was listening to classical music and uh, while I worked, it, I think it's just so it's so intricate and there's so many little pieces and parts of it yeah. that go together. And uh, it's, it's amazing. It, it is amazing to me that a guy can hear all these instruments in his head, mm -hmm. write a score that combines them all. It is yeah. amazing. So are you a car guy? Do you like cars? I enjoy cars. I've never gotten to like, I, I have a Honda Accord and that's about the most powerful thing I've gotten to drive. So, um, but I did, I, I will say this, I, uh, I used to work um, doing some videography work and I used to do a lot of work for Bristol Motor Speedway, mm. um, the NASCAR yeah. stadium. And did I've you ever get one out? And, I've, I mean, I've gotten to ride going pretty, f like approaching a hundred miles an hour around the track and it's, it's fun. <laughs> yeah, but I was uh, holding a camera and uh, wow. technically didn't have a seatbelt on. So yeah, it's a little a, scary. It's just a dream of mine. I'd like to take my Acura up to the Kentucky Speedway and just be able to open it up. You know, I'm yeah. I'm not going to admit how fast I have opened it up. <laughs> uh, not on the speedway. Uh, so I'd really love to do it on the speedway. Uh, do you, what what would be your hobbies, habits, or you know things do you do for fun? Well, um, you know, recently it's keeping a baby alive. That's uh -huh. <laughs> that's, uh, that's a good habit. That's a good been hobby. Important for us. Uh, but music is is a big one. Um, I really enjoy music. I like writing music, and um, so that's that's big. Uh, Abby and I we've lived in the mountains ever since we got married, and so we have been big hikers um, and just enjoying outdoor stuff. Oh, so, you um, have to try Red River Gorge. Yeah, we've heard, we've heard yeah, about that. Yeah, it's great. Uh, uh, what's the craziest thing you've done? Craziest thing? You've done anything crazy? Honestly, it was probably that time around the racetrack when I, I was in the car with someone I had never met. I was in the back seat holding a camera without a seatbelt on flying around a racetrack at 100 miles an hour. That was scary. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're trusting yourself. I was trusting the guy behind the yeah, wheel. Is yeah, what it exactly. Was. Right, you're right, and trusting yourself to him. That's that's exactly right. Yeah. Uh, uh, if you could go anywhere in the world, where would you like to go? Mm, I'd like to see the Grand Canyon. I've never seen the Grand Canyon. Yeah, it's something. Yeah. It is something. I'll, I'll tell you my two favorite natural wonders that just take your breath, blow you away. Grand Canyon, and in Brazil, southern Brazil, Foz de Iguaçu, the, uh, the, the, it's the, you know, the biggest waterfall in the world. Oh, okay. uh, not, not highest, but just, it's like the, the jungle just falls. Yeah. It's, it's something to see. Oh. And you think you you walk up to it, you think you see it, and you're stunned. And then you get up there and you realize what you're seeing is like 10% of it. Right. And it just opens up. It's just amazing. The Grand Canyon is like that. It just goes on and on. Uh, you, you don't ever get tired of seeing it. That's great. Uh, well, I hope you get to see it, man. I brought some gifts for you. Oh, okay. Um, all right. First of all, a book. I pulled a book off my shelf, but one that I like. And this is called Leadership Pain by Samuel Chan. And it's a great book on leadership. There are several books on leadership I really like, but this one is a Christian, Christian book. Uh, but he just talks about uh, the cost of leadership and and learning how to grow through uh, things that hurt. You know, there's there's pain and and growth and growth and pain, and uh, we're in that right now. So yeah. I hope that'll be a blessing Appreciate to you. All right, all right, I've got several other little things. Uh, all right, first of all, you will you will see that this is my love language. People here express their love to me. So I'm sharing my largesse with you. Man of my own heart. Yeah, Reese's, Reese's Cups. Uh, here is a CD by Doxology uh, okay. the, the, at uh, Boyce Band. Uh, my secretary at the seminary is in this group. Uh, anyway, I think you'll enjoy that. Okay. Uh, okay. So we, we color coordinate our shoestrings around here. I'm just saying. So, <laughs> I didn't really have any good colored ones, but I did have a pair of black. But you can contrast, like with white, your white bucks, you can do black shoestrings. That would really be cool. On one of the shoes. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, no, there's two in there. There's, oh, there's two. two. No, there's okay. two. Yeah, there's okay. two in there. <laughs> All right. Uh, I always, if I have a Tumi something, I, I, I try. I like to give Tumi uh, great luggage. But this is a uh, sleep mask, and right. uh, you you might need it some mornings after you've been up with James all night and. Abby lets you sleep in while she takes care of him in the morning. You can have your sleep mask. All right, man. Uh, this is soap from Brazil. This is uh, this is made from Brazil nuts, and I, I like it. You okay. may, you know, if maybe you or Abby would like it. But anyway, that's from Ooh. Manaus, Brazil. All right, look here, man. Personalized collar stays. Unfortunately, it's my name on them, so. It says Herschel York, but, you know, you're the only guy in your house that's going to have Herschel York collar stays on there. There's few in the world who will yeah. have one of those. Uh, and then I've been given, I, give, I use fountain pens. I got you a whole set colored fountain pens. You can probably, I don't know, uh, these might bleed through your Bible, but anyway, there's, uh, what, seven colors fountain pens. These are really nice. I like them a lot. Uh, zebras. There you go. And for my trips to Israel, I have the, this little cases. It's great to keep like a small Bible in. You know, when I travel with my Bibles, they always get bent up. Pages get ripped. Like if you put it in your briefcase, suitcase, or whatever. So anyway, this is just a nice little pocket for a Bible, and it goes in a suitcase. Uh, there you go. All right, I'm told that neither the Heisels nor the Cunninghams responded. So, uh, all right, here's here's what I will do. Uh, I'll ask a trivia question. Uh, I'll ask a question about something that Will just said. First person on Facebook that tells me the answer to the question can get the book, all right? Uh, what country did he go to as a child with his parents in what country were his parents missionaries where he lived with them all right all right anybody give an answer yet you were hitting us hitting us up on facebook not yet oh come on all right well we'll when somebody does all right ryan sturm ryan sturm you're the guy you got it we'll hold the book for you yeah that's right we'll get it to you man all right glad that you watched and i'm grateful to all of you for watching uh so lord willing this sunday let me tell you read the end of luke 18 the, the story of the blind beggar as jesus goes into jericho and then the first story in luke 19 which is the familiar story of zacchaeus read them together we're going to cover both of them how do they connect and I can't wait. I'm really excited about it. You're going to see some things there. I think what Luke is doing with it. How does it, how does it connect to the rich ruler from last week? You got the rich ruler, a blind beggar, a tax collector. Hmm. What's Luke doing? Uh, how does it connect to what Jesus said about the Pharisee and the tax collector? So a lot going on there. Can't wait to preach it on Sunday morning. And Lord willing, I will see you then. And uh, we'll see you again next week on Pastor Chat.